Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. Uh, so as you might have guessed by the title, today I wanted to talk about a pretty interesting topic that comes up on internet forums like Cloudy Nights all the time, and that's whether a premium APO is worth the extra money over more of an entry level model. Uh, for those not familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com where I do all kinds of fun astronomy reviews and just post other astronomy related content. Uh, just overall, I've owned over 100 scopes. Um, Owned a number of premium APOs, so I do have a pretty, you know, pretty decent frame of reference. Uh, if you're curious, um, so I've owned a Teleview 85, an NP101. Um, I've owned the Takahashi FS128. Uh, I currently have the FSQ 106 from Takahashi. Um, I've also owned the Tech 140, and I've also owned a couple of the premium triplets from Lomo uh, in uh, Stellar View tubes, and I currently have one in the William Optics tube. Um, so I've had a pretty wide, you know, experience with APOs. Basically, what I'm trying to get at. Um, anyhow, so let's kind of get to it. Um, I've kind of broken down uh, the scopes into three different categories, from entry to mid to higher level, and I'll kind of go through with what you usually can expect uh, by, you know, kind of getting taking those increments. So let's start by looking at the more entry level scopes. Um, so I've kind of grouped a couple of brands uh, into you know like those three tiers that I talked about. Um, in the more entry level brands, I would say that Astrotech, Orion, Meet, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, Skywatcher would kind of fall into this category. Um, so what can you expect with these guys? Or maybe you already have one of these and you already know what to expect. Um, but in general, these scopes are going to be imported from either China or Taiwan these days. Um, they will, construction-wise, actually, these days, they're made pretty well. Um, the finish on them is good. The fit and finish is good. The focusers that they will typically come with is a two-speed focuser. And, um, you know, especially for visual use, these are these are not a bad focuser at all. Um, if you do, you know, happen to use the really heavy two-inch eyepieces, you might experience slippage issues with these. There, you know, some of the models are known for that. For astrophotography, um, you know, if you, if you've got a lighter setup, usually you won't have too many issues. If you have a um, a heavier setup, you might experience issues with these stock focusers with the tilt. Uh, that can become an issue or again with them just slipping um, so something to keep in mind um, and kind of get into the optics uh, so typically if you get like let's say this is the Astrotech uh, 72 ED this is a doublet lens so there's two lenses one of them is an ED element that's why they're called the ED uh, color correction on these is going to be much better than an achromatic uh, refractor but uh, you will still see some secondary color, so you'll see some blue around bright stars, uh, the moon, and the planets. Um, sensitive, like some people are really sensitive to the secondary color that I just kind of talked about. Some people are not. Like my eyes are really sensitive to blue, so I see secondary color even kind of in more premium scopes. Um, but I, you know, I've also been observing for a lot longer. Uh, if you're doing astrophotography, the uh, the cameras, the CMOS cameras that you're probably going to be using these days, whether it's a DSLR or a dedicated camera, like you know, like one of these guys, they're actually even more sensitive to that blue light. So chances are, you know, if you can see it visually, you're definitely going to see it on camera. And again, it'll just it'll just be like a purple bluish halo, especially around blue uh, bright stars. So uh, going from this to the next tier, which um, I, in this tier I would categorize a couple of different brands. Um, so this is a William Optics. This I feel does uh, fall into like that mid-tier category. Um, the other ones would be uh, Stellar View and APM that are kind of in this uh, you know mid-tier category. There's a few other brands. So what do you get by going with one of these? Typically, depending on the model, the focuser might be better. Like this is a William Optics. Mine actually has a feather touch focuser. This is about as good of a focuser as it gets. So I mean, there's really nothing better. Um, from what I understand, uh, APM actually has some really good focusers that they make that are like larger. I think 2.7 inch and 3 inch models. 
Um, so you, you typically will get a little bit better focus here. Construction wise, um, the fit and finish of these are probably a little bit better than like the entry level brands. Um, I want to say terribly better though, like there isn't anything like, you know, like super duper better about it, you know, construction wise. Optic wise, um, typically you are going to get a better optic with this. So a lot of these will start to have a triplet lens to where the color correction is going to be a lot better. In general, with these, it's probably still going to be a little hit and miss, uh, but you could get a really good lens that's, you know, let's say equivalent to the premium brands. Uh, you could not, so it's a little bit of a luck of a draw, unless they happen to have a certificate that they come with that, like, you know, says uh, the strel ratio and, like, you know, like basically the, 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 the specs on the lens. Um, so yeah, these are the mid-tier scopes. Overall, this uh, this is you know as you might imagine, it's kind of a sweet spot. Um, so let's talk about uh, the premium brands. So to represent the premium brands, I've got my um, Takahashi FSQ 106. Um, so I'll just use a Takahashi just in general as a representation of the premium brands. All right, I'm gonna fire that video guy. <laughs> um, anyhow, the video guy is the tripod, by the way. Um, so yeah, get into the premium brands of scopes. Um, what brands are in this category? Um, I would say, and you know, I think the consensus is that Takahashi is definitely one of them. Astrophysics is certainly one of them. They're probably like considered the most premium refractor brand. Uh, partially just because they're, you know, they're kind of hard to come by. Um, and then Tech is definitely going to be one of them. Um, uh, Takaharsis are made in Japan. Tech and Astrophysics are both made in the U.S. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of like the cream of the crop of refractors. So what do you get by going with one of these guys with the premium brands? What's the main difference? Um, really what you're paying for is essentially perfect optics. So the figure on the optics is going to be about as good as it gets and the polish is going to be about as good as it gets. Um, so generally speaking the figure will give you the sharpest image you know you can get out of that particular aperture scope um, and uh, the um, the polish will give you the best contrast typically possible out of that possible scope. Um, so I guess uh, to kind of sum it up, um, these scopes, you know, do keep in mind that they do not defy the laws of physics. So this scope, you know, it's about a four inch scope, it'll perform at the best that a four inch scope can do. So it'll provide you the best image that a four inch scope can provide essentially. Uh, but is it going to be like like if you look at let's say the dumbbell nebula, the ring nebula, like you know M51, the whirlpool galaxy, will this uh, show you a better image than let's say like a 10 inch daub or something like that? Um, you know, no, it's not going to defy the laws of physics. So on them fuzzies, uh, the bigger aperture scopes, they will still show you more. Although I mean the the image in these is you know it's spectacular because the contrast is really good because again of that really good polish on the lens and the really good bat flint in there, um, the fit and finish. I mean these things you know like in general they're kind of like a work of art you know so they're beautiful scopes, um, but yeah they do not defy the laws of physics. Um, so we kind of touched on the optics. Um, Typically with these, with the premium scopes, especially like recently manufactured ones, they're basically all going to be secondary color free. They're going to be a triplet design, like this is actually a quadruplet. Um, so this one actually has four lenses in it. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, mechanics wise, um, these are going to be about as good as it gets. So typically uh, they'll be powder coated instead of painted. Uh, typically they'll have about as good of a focus here as you could get. Uh, just in general, the fit and finish on these is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so that's really nice. Now you, can, you noticed uh, perhaps that I kept on saying typically. 
Um, I'm gonna, you know, talk about Takahashi here, and I'm sorry to the Takahashi fans. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to offend you guys, but uh, I'm just gonna mention a couple of things about Takahashi in particular. And I like them. I own several Takahashi's. You know, they're great scopes. But like for his Takahashi's, like honestly, their paint is not any better than like you know these guys. You know, they just use regular paint. Their focusers, they're not a bad focuser. Like this one, the FSK 106, it actually uses a four-inch focuser. It is rotating, uh, so especially for camera use, it's really nice. But even for like you know visual use, uh, you know you kind of adjust the angle of the where the IP is pointing. So that's pretty cool. So not a bad focuser, smoothness-wise, it's not bad. But I mean these are not like you know on par with the Feather Touch focuser though. So it depends. Like you know like if if you're actually thinking about a Takahashi in particular. Um, I wouldn't really say that their, you know, finish is better than these guys. Their focusers are really not better than these guys. And they're actually a single speed focuser too, which is pretty substandard these days. I mean, pretty much everything comes with a uh, two speed focuser. So I guess um, to kind of sum it all up and, you know, bring the ship home. Um, are, is this scope worth it? Like, are the premium scopes worth it over, like, the more entry level or mid-range models? Well, it kind of depends. I think it'll vary from person to person to whether you know whether it's worth it. So, what do I mean by that? Um, basically, if you're somebody that's really deep into the hobby, you're going to be using your scope several times a week. You know, uh, like pretty much any clear night. You know, you're going to bring this thing out. You're either doing astrophotography, visual work, or whatever your thing is. I would say that the mid-tier scopes are certainly worth it. Um, even, you know, like, you know, obviously I own, like, you know, like, th this scope, which would be considered a premium scope. I own several other premium scopes uh, that are, you know, like, you know, good APOs. Um, you know, so obviously to me it's worth them. And why is that? Because, you know, like, I'm out there, you know, I, I use this stuff a lot. So to me, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if I'm going to spend the time to, like, drive out to dark skies or, you know, take this thing to a star party or just, you know, just in general even use it at home, like, for plants or observing, I mean, why not invest in something that's going to give you the best possible image? That's just kind of my reasoning. Um, to kind of put a little bit of numbers on on this, you know, like uh, to kind of quantify it a little bit for you and you know, maybe to help you decide. Um, I think overall, if you have or are thinking about, you know, like one of these intro level scopes, and now when I'm talking about these, we're going to assume that all of these are the same aperture. So we'll assume that all of these are like a foreign scope, for instance, or whatever aperture you're considering. So if you're looking at an entry level, uh, just ED doublet, which, you know, these, most of these, you know, unless they're the bigger ones, these are like under a thousand bucks, um, you're probably getting about. 20 to 25 better performance with the premium scopes in regards to uh, contrast, sharpness, um, especially color correction though. So the color, the secondary color is going to be much better color, cor color corrected in these guys versus this. Uh, contrast and sharpness probably will be better as well. I mean probably not 20% better but it will be better you know with this guy. Uh, but color correction will certainly be a lot better with the premium scopes. Um, to kind of, if, if we're comparing the mid-tier scopes to the uh, premium scopes, I would say the difference is really closer to like 5 to 10% in both color correction, sharpness, and contrast. Um, so it, just depending on, you know, how good of a like sample you get, because there are sample variations, you know, with pretty much any optics, so like some of them will just naturally be like sharper the way that they're figured from the factory and that type of deal, uh, or have like a little bit better contrast in that type of deal. Um, so yeah, so the difference here is not really big. Um, you know, and again, it's, it's just kind of a personal preference or personal, I guess, decision that you have to make. You know, some people, they, you know, they look at this, like the FSQ 106, I think brand new, these things are like six grand right now, and they're uh, the new ED version of this. And, you know, people, they'd be like, wow, that's, that's crazy, like, why would you spend that much money? Well, I mean, you think about it, okay, I mean, like, if you're buying one of these and you're going to use it for 10, 20 years, I mean, you divide even six grand over, you know, like, 20 years, or even 10 years, I mean, it's really not that much money, you know, per day, let's say. Um, I mean, there's plenty of people that will go out and, you know, buy a Starbucks cup of coffee for six bucks every single morning, to, to them that's worth it, right? So, uh, like, I don't do that. And, like I'd way rather you know have this than a Starbucks every morning so you know it's kind of a personal preference so um, yeah 
Uh, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, comments on anything, uh, please do let me know. Um, I'll be happy to, you know, to kind of answer as best as I can, and I'll see you guys next time.